Is this live? It, it is. Live. There it is. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and berry, it's us again today. So we're going to get right into it. Sorry for the delay. We were going to start at five, but it's a time warp. <laughs> How you doing? Let's be Good day. Right now. <laughs> Was that from Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you remember the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised how many people actually I know. I did magic at it once. I was entertaining at a, at a session of that. Oh, yeah. Um, in, at in the intermission time. Yeah. That's a good one. That was good. Was it back in the day whenever it first came out? Or? I guess it was probably the 80s. Okay. I think it came out like the 70s, right? I kind of don't remember. I don't remember my past. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I block it or what. So, like I shared with you that we uh, chopped that video up, that hour, we chopped it up and I put it up on the internet and it got uh, a little bit of this and a bunch of that. Nice. I don't know why or how, because that's the way, the way the internet works. <laughs> but the one that got the most traffic, it was like 10,000 views on it about the homeless people in Los Angeles. Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yep, another one that got a lot of traffic was the blood sausage thing. I saw that, yeah. And I said sausageinated, and there were some comments on there about it. I said, I said this is the, my, my first day for hearing this new word, sausageinated. <laughs> nice. 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 But it was interesting because uh, normally with the long, long form video, you don't get interaction because people don't have time to watch a whole hour of stuff. Right. We did get some interaction last time. So if anybody wants to interact this time, feel free. I can't remember. You mean you mean there was somebody on the live? Yeah, somebody yeah, was on the live. Uh, your friend and and, and there was a couple of questions, but I just I, I honestly I can't remember. I can't remember either because we went and we didn't see until the end of last time. We we go all over the board. I mean, this is this is kind of like a Joe Roganish type podcast and thing. That's so true. We don't really have any focus niche like how to make money on the internet. Yeah, how to find women, or how to cook <laughs> blood sausage. You know, right, no right. topic here, so we just kind of go all over the place. And we we're gonna th this morning. I started thinking about stuff like conspiracy theories and um, uh, what was some of the other stuff, the, like the deep fake stuff. All oh, the deep fakes. Yeah, yeah those are weird. weird. You, you, you can't tell what's real anymore. The artificial intelligence stuff that's happening now. I, th I think a lot of people don't think deep enough on what's mm -hmm. happening with all that. They think, oh, this is kind of cool. I can, you know, have it do it for me. Ta -da. So since in my former life I was doing network security, um, I, I still get alerts. And I got an alert, I think it was like three months ago or four months ago. And it was an article. And it was talking about how for the very first time ever, the fakes were so good, you can tell the difference between real and fake. And they were saying that um, the deep fakes that were coming out now, that all, you know, basically the last three months, they're so good, even whenever you plug it into a machine, the machine can't. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, they're saying that there's no way to validate video. Right, and then the controversial part of some of that is the facial recognition stuff that happens. They're relying on that kind of stuff, and the failure rate on it is like 50-50. It's like flipping a coin. So yeah. You remember the movie Minority Report? Mm -hmm. Where people get accused of something, predictive mm -hmm. analytics kind of stuff? So that kind of crap that can start happening where all of a sudden, hey, you're under arrest. Why? What did I do? I was just at Burger King. No, we um, have you on video law. Uh, we have a video law. Uh, yeah. So, 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 so. yeah, and and it's and it's all doctorable now. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty intense. The, in fact, with CRISPR technology, um, I don't know if you're familiar with CRISPR. Yeah. So CRISPR is the way that they actually edit. You know, they can they can actually go in and do micro editing of like you know various things like RNA and DNA and things like that. Okay. Creepy and, stuff. Yeah, the creepy stuff. stuff. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And so that's it, it's basically it's black market. It's easy. Like basically for like fifteen thousand dollars, you can set up something in your basement 
to do this kind of stuff. Splicing genes and weird stuff. It's like, it's not really that expensive, but it's because of CRISPR. And essentially um, what they now found was people are actually manufacturing fake DNA for crime scenes and stuff. So people are getting smart with how they're using all of this. So video evidence can't be, it can't really be relied on anymore. DNA evidence can't be relied on anymore. And we know with, um, with if you go into the conspiracy theories, like Operation Bluebeam is what you would have to look up. But, you know, we, we've seen it in real life, masks or holographic images or things like that that are so effectual, you're not even sure what you're seeing in real life either. Right. So we've gotten to the point where realistically it's it's become actually more difficult than it used to be to prove that somebody did something. Well, a lot of people don't realize how harmful it is because they think, it's, oh, it's just a prank. Mm -hmm. And people are doing all these prank videos and stuff. Or they're doing something where these gold diggers are picking up guys that have, you know, high exotic cars and stuff. Yeah. And you can tell that it's faked thing. The girl's in on it, the guy's in on it, and they're making it look from, from a distance. And you can kind of tell that they're in on it because they're both mic'd. Yeah. And there's a photographer. Right. So, but, but people fall into that stuff because they don't, it's the magic, the deception of the magic. They think, oh, yeah, that girl is a gold digger for that guy. Right. But it's not real. And that's got a, that got a concern with me because of that weird stuff. And now you're talking about being able to 3D print DNA that's not even real. Yeah. Well, not 3D print, but yeah, with CRISPR. But I'm just, I'm just, I just said that because they got that kind of thing, 3D printer, where so you can 3D print their teeth and all that kind of Yeah. That's what I've been done deal. Exactly. I mean, that was a, that was an old school thing. That's been around since 1970s. They would actually, um, people who would go commit murders and stuff like, you know, ice pick man, and different, different, like, yeah, he was called it. He was, yeah, it was called the Ice Pick Command or something like that. But he was world famous uh, case, infamous, I should say. Um, he ended up being one of the most high paid assassins in the entire world at the time frame. And they found him and he was like talking about how he got away with it for so many years. Yeah. He just, he got away with it for so many years. Well, see, that, that's one phase of all this stuff where someone does stuff and they get creative and they get away with it. Yeah. There's a new phase of stuff where stuff is just going to artificially, intelligently create stuff. And you're going to be guilty of something that you have no idea how it even happened. Right. For reason. Like my heart. And it's, <laughs> yeah. And the thing is, is, it's, you know how fast it is to cut and paste. Mm -hmm. You can cut and paste out a whole bunch of stuff pretty quick, thousands and right. thousands of words. So a piece of software can duplicate another piece of software almost instantaneously. Yeah. And that's what's got me a little bit concerned with all that stuff. Being a magician, people can be deceived. And now they're being deceived and, and it's nobody's the deceiver. Right. That's the creepy part. Yeah. And at first people thought, oh, the robots aren't going to take over like iRobot and all that kind of stuff. Robots aren't going to take over. Well, it ain't going to be the robots. It's going to be the humans that are reading data that they think is true and it's not. And then they're going to react on it. You're the one that raped my daughter. No, I'm not. I wasn't there. <laughs> right. But the AI created it. Mm -hmm. Out of... Uh, because whoever developed the program is only 50% accurate. So I just, <laughs> look, who looks kind of like this person? Oh, there's, that guy's got two eyes. Yeah. That guy's got two ears. Yeah. He's got one mouth. Ah, it's him. Yeah. So there must be a bunch of stick figures being blamed for everything. <laughs> yeah, it's very creepy. It is very creepy. But yeah, I mean, we're in a, <coughs> we're in a brave new world. I mean, literally the movie. The book, Brave New World. Mm -hmm. We're in it right now. It's in the Truman Report. Yep. All that stuff. It, we, our technology has become so advanced, we're not even sure who it is that originated anything anymore. 
You know what I mean? The nice thing about what we're, we're doing right now is we're speculating all this stuff. We don't know either way. So YouTube can't kick us off here because we're claiming that something is the truth. So we're in a neutral space. Dude. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very fascinating, though. Um, the technology as it's been developing, there's also a bunch of other really fascinating technology that I've been uh, that I've been seeing. There was a demo about nine months ago. I, ha I haven't seen anything mainstream about it, but um, you know, I saw it on various different social media platforms. There was a company that was creating. Um, basically, it was a about I would say. You know, like a, a container, like a train car container, yeah. it's about that sized. And they were creating the very first fusion, or no, fissionable material reactor that's supposed to go. Now, it doesn't sound like what it is, like I'm using the wrong words here. But basically, it's they're going to transport to Mars, okay? And this particular device took material into it. And then they would hit a button and it would use lasers and plasma in order to strip the stuff in it all down to its base molecules. So there was a company a while back that named StarTech that used to make a, a device like that. It was a plasmification device. And it actually took garbage in, and then it, it used the plasma, the plasma generator, to burn all the material up, and it could put out more energy than it was getting in. And they also were able to do other things with it. It creates this gas called syngas. It's a mixture of all these different molecules, and it's combustible because it's now volatile. So if you feed it back into the fusion reactor, it now is putting out more energy than you're taking in. So it was very fascinating. So here's the point. So here we're going at this. <laughs> so so they were able to strip down all of the all of this stuff to its base molecular structure, and then they used lasers. Um, sound like it was using green lasers, and set up in an array to recombine those molecules into various different things. And we're talking about full on Star Trek replicators here. Bottom line. Okay, so it goes through and it finds all the different elements and molecules and things. It says, I want to create some of this stuff. And here is beef, yeah. and here is gold, and here is water. Say you have a broken phone. You put the broken phone in there. And you have these, like, you know, slabs of iron or whatever. And you're putting all this in the machine. You put, it strips it all into its base material. And you're like, you know, we're going to create, uh, let's see, we're going to create a new microprocessor. Okay, well, what, what materials do we need for that? Well, let's see, we need gold, we need some platinum, we need, um, we need uh, some silicon, and then we need some, some steel because we have to create a framework for like all of us to work on. And then it just goes, whoop, and it just creates it up. Like, literally out of nowhere, and you just go, okay. Now we can put it all together. Yeah, it's like Star Trek and stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. Really insane stuff. And there's also some other technology that they've, that they've been talking about, which is healing technology, where they're talking about, um, uh, yeah, it's Tesla made these like Tesla beds that are out there, and there's a few other things like that that are supposed to be like so advanced that literally you just go sleep in them and they repair your DNA and stuff. I saw a thing that is uh, just about using linen sheets instead of uh, like synthetic type sheets and you sleep better because the static charge that's in linen versus <laughs> other stuff. Yeah, I don't know about the linen sheets thing. I do know a lot of people talk about I, that. I don't even know. There's, there's one of the things about these people that create this bullshit. Because I remember what it was, was, there was a guy that was talking about this on his YouTube podcast. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about it. I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then a little bit later, he did say, oh, by the way, if you're interested in that, I got to go for low. So mm -hmm. it might be bullshit that he's saying it about whatever it is, just to be able to sell it. I don't know if I would say, if I would go to saying it's bullshit. I mean, everything <laughs> does have a frequency. And we've proven over the many, many years that frequencies, um, you know, 
electronic frequencies and frequencies around us in the environment, natural frequencies. So like, you know, if you go into a cave, and it's like full of crystals that are resonating at a certain frequency, mm -hmm. it can make you feel like creeped out. Like, things like that, they affect us. Yeah. And in fact, certain high frequencies can actually um, uh, explain paranormal activity. I was just going to bring that up. That was part of the, the topic with the UFO element in it. Um, yeah. We can't see UFOs because they're not in a spectrum that we can see because there's only certain colors that we can see in a certain spectrum. There's only certain sounds that we can hear. So yeah, sound spectrum. That's one of the claims. And We're not uh, cuttlefish. Cuttlefish have some of the best uh, uh, spectrums that they can see in. <laughs> so they they're say. studying them. Yeah, because they can see in this huge range of spectrum. So there could be all these, uh, what do you call them, aliens that people can't see unless you're vibrating at the right frequency, which might be an insanity frequency. <laughs> or some people might think it's insanity just because you start saying, I was abducted by an alien. <laughs> There's this guy I follow uh, <laughs> on, uh, on YouTube and TikTok. It's a Museum of Terror. What's the name of the guy? Or is the name of the channel, I should say. Um, he um, he's a neuroscientist and he studies all this woo woo stuff. Like he like studies it, like really studies it. So he's like out there on like uh, Skinwalker Ranch and all these famous places uh, where phenomena happens. He studies it all and he goes back and repeats all like government, secret government documents that got declassified and to find all this material. And um, he has this product called Dysiony Goggles, which they, they were popular many, many years ago, but um, they, they're they not usually made with Dysiony. They're usually made with something else because Dysiony was actually, had a very specific process to it that wasn't really super stable. And so, so he's basically modernized the product. So he creates these Dysiony goggles. Well, looking through them, it actually lets you see frequencies of energy. Like there's an enhanced spectrum that lets you see in some ways. Everything, of course, looks purple whenever you look through it. But you can kind of see this almost shimmer around people when you have it on. They call it aura goggles mm -hmm. as well. Because you can actually see a shimmer around living things. The cool thing about it is, and this goes to the aliens, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people who are using the Dysiony goggles, who as they're going around, they're like, oh, this is cool. They'll look up and they'll be like, what the hell is that? And they'll see things fly in the sky right. that you can't see without the goggles on. And they'll be like, are those always there? <laughs> That's kind of what I'm talking about. You know, it's kind of like a radio station. If you can tune into the right radio station, it's there. I didn't know that channel was there. Yeah. You know how to find KQ92, but there might be something that's next to it that you know, some guy's public address system or something. Well, yeah. radio, or the name radio. And, and I don't get paid for the Dyson goggles or anything like that. So if you want to go look the guy up and go do your own research on that, feel free. It's actually pretty fascinating. The mind to mind device that he has, too, he teaches you how to make one. It's pretty fascinating. All that stuff is pretty fascinating when all of a sudden your brain goes outside of current reality. Well, you can kind of imagine, because well, they've got those dog whistles. Supposedly dogs can hear them, you can. I can hear them. You can hear them. I can hear dog whistles. <laughs> but it, it makes sense. Especially during a full moon. <laughs> Wolf whistle, that's a different thing. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean though. But the idea of things that are, that are vibrating at a frequency that you're not used to See, so if you start vibrating at that frequency, like did you ever read the, the book The Celestine Prophecy? I don't think I read that one. Mm -hmm. I, I read it a while back, and I, at first it was a, it was a spiritual book. I was on my spiritual path, so I was mm -hmm. one learned about the spiritual stuff. So I got the book, and I started reading it, and I thought, this isn't about chakras and all that stuff. This is like vibrating plants, and all of a sudden I read it further, and I go, Oh, I get it. This is the frequency of all this stuff. And people would vibrate at a certain frequency and then they would ascend. Yeah, there's a lot of talk about that. Plants and 
they talked a little bit about ayahuasca and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. plants are there's spores among plants, and they're communicating to the jungle, and the jungle's telling them what to do and where to go. And there's these different insights. Mm -hmm. So it goes up to the eighth insight, then there's the ninth insight, the tenth insight, and there's all these religious figures that are trying to not not let them find these scrolls, these insights. All this stuff. So yeah, when I first started reading, I thought, "Oh, this is fiction." And then I got, "Oh, I get it. They're talking about that kind of energy work kind of stuff." Mm -hmm. I still don't believe in all that kind of stuff. So I don't know where I was going with that, but it's that kind of thing that all of a sudden you again think outside of the box, kind of thing, and how somebody could disappear when all of a sudden they just ascended to heaven or wherever. Yeah, because they were now vibrating at a certain frequency and they were gone. Right. Where did everybody go? Yeah, it's interesting. Well, the, you know, I mean, thousands of years ago, we have very interesting records just before, you know, um, just before the Dark Ages, where our records were not so great. But basically, they would talk about people who could teleport or move long distances. They would talk about this kind of stuff in there. And a lot of them would explain like it would look like they just stepped through something in space. This step. Like and it would be you mean like, like a portal? Like yeah, a, like, like they step behind something except it just doesn't look like there's anything there. And yeah, there's like nothing there's just there, they just walk through it. Yeah. It isn't a wall, it's like air, nothing. Yeah. It was like they stepped somewhere else. Yeah, it's very interesting. And if um, if anybody knows anything about magic or anything like that, not not stage magic, but you know the the more woo -woo magic. magic with the J. And there you go, magic with the J, or or M A G I C K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so in traditional forms of magic which now modern term i guess would be necromancy for it the ultimate form of like that magical practice is to be able to step into worlds at once so apparently like in theory you could get yourself elevated to enough of a space where your spirit and your body um are existing on both sides of the veil at the same time. So like, you know, basically in this world, having the spirit world. So there's an out-of-body experience? No, not an out-of-body experience because you're, you're physically, you're physically able to span the whole spectrum. So in theory, this goes to what we're talking about, the teleportation stuff. In theory, they're able to step through the veil and back out in a different place in space. There was just a movie about that. I went and saw it. I forgot what that movie was called. Interesting. I just recently saw this movie. I forgot what it was called. If you guys remember, that's right. They they know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was that kind of thing where a person can can leave a certain time mm -hmm. and go back to a different time. Yeah. I, I would imagine if that was true, it would probably look something like Lucy. Have you ever seen the movie? It's this gal who gets exposed to a drug that basically is supposed to accelerate the brain. And she um, is forced to be a mule for, the, uh, for a drug cartel. And um, or actually, I think it's more like triads. But anyways. So they cut her open, they put it in, the drugs in, and then um, some guy, one of the, the bad guys, tries to take liberties with her, and she basically is like, you and I'll go away. And so he throws her on the ground and kicks her in the stomach, and you know, the wound and breaks the bag open, so she starts leaking all this drug inside of her. <clears throat> And um, at first, it gives her these like really bad seizures, but then it starts to awaken more of the brain. You know that old theory we're using about so much of our brain. Sure. 
and uh, starts to awaken more of the brain, and then she starts to evolve. And she evolves to the point to where literally like time and space are not a thing. She's just like teleporting to other places and right. she knows exactly what's going to happen. She suddenly knows all languages and how to work computers without needing a computer. And I like movies like that. I haven't seen that one. But those kind of things make you think differently. Yeah. Like and Interstellar. Yeah. Memento. It's got an interesting ending. I really actually like uh, Lucy's ending. So if you if you do like those kind of movies, I'd pick it up. It's a it's a pretty trippy movie. Netflix. Uh, I think it is on Netflix. Yeah. So when, when I was asking you about the title, the the topics for today. Yeah. You shot out something that's totally different, and we haven't talked about that yet. But that was what I titled it. New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions for 2024. Even though New Year's is kind of what did you do for New Year's? Anything? No, I have a new one. So, you know, we stayed up till midnight. That's what we did. And that was, that was more than I did last, last year. That's more than I did. Yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, I didn't. Last year, I wasn't able to stay up till midnight. But I, I was tired. I actually fell asleep on accident. And uh, this year, though, we, we were up till midnight. And uh, so we celebrated the new year. But, yeah, New Year's resolutions and the mindset. And that's what I really want to talk about was mindset because a lot of people go into a new year setting new year's resolutions and they do it wrong. And here's what I mean by that. They're coming into it, setting new year's resolution about how they're going to do something, but they're already failed. They've already failed because they're going to do something instead oh, of no. being in the action. You know so what, I mean? what is mindset to you? So we can get on the same page of what mindset is. Well, in this particular case, it's about, I guess it would be willpower. Because you're really, you're talking about, you know, when you're talking about mindset in this particular context, a lot of people get these like New Year's resolutions or other different things that they want to do, and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm guilty of that too. Oh, I want to do that. I'm going to do that. Those types of things, but they're all in the future. Well, because of the entities that we are, future doesn't exist. That's a hallucination. So is the past. Neither one of those things exists. All you have is now. So if you're going to do something, you're not going to do it. Right. <laughs> it's yeah, it's in the to, future. You have to act as if. To me, mindset is sort of a thermostat. It's where your mind is set. Mm -hmm. And you can't think out of it. So in your case, um, my goal is to make $100,000. Well, you're already defeated because you're going for it. And you never right. get there because you're always wanting it. Right. So wanting something and having it is a different situation. So if you can emotionally feel the hundred thousand dollars, then all of a sudden you want a big then all of a sudden it starts popping into place. Right. So that's a different mindset than wishing. Because that was the big problem with this uh, movie The Secret. Everybody's talking about I've got a Ferrari in my driveway oh, yeah. since I've seen that, but yeah. But that's what a lot of people were there was a controversial issue over that because some people were, were hoping to acquire their dreams, manifest, mm -hmm. and others were saying you need to take some action. You can't yeah. just hope for it. Right. Because we are in the physical world, if you want that hundred thousand dollars, you want to get that retreat center, or you want whatever it is, you gotta figure out what those dimensions are, how many rooms are in there, and how far is it away from my house and and if I need the money, right. am I gonna pay for it or is somebody else going to philanthropically gift the money to you or is the property going to be a, a partnership and you need to get really really clear on that so that it so the universe knows what the hell you're asking yeah because it will give you what you want and if it's not real clear you'll get jumped yeah and i shared with elizabeth that uh, i had manifested this girlfriend back in the 90s and it was a, one of those love-hate relationships and 
after we broke up, I was going through some old computer files. I had an old 512 Macintosh with the little, what is it, three and a half inch discs, floppies in there. Floppies, yeah. I had pulled this short story that I had wrote. It was called The Natural Beauty. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go into the whole details of it, but basically the story described that woman. <laughs> All everything from, you know, fake hair, fake makeup, fake implants, fake fingernails. All that stuff was in there. And I had manifested that exact woman. So now I've got Monica. And what I did with that was I got clear. I said, no drinking, no drugs, no tattoos, no piercings, no kids, and natural. And that's basically Monica, other than she's got one child, she's got pierced ears, and once in a while she'll have a glass of wine a couple of years. So I got exactly what I was wanting because I got real clear on it. Right. And if you don't get clear on it, the universe is going to deliver it to you. And you're going to go, what the heck is this? How come my life's not working? Right. You start manifesting shit you don't want. There's a lot of people who are really into manifestation right now. In fact, there's a lady um, that we went and met. I was telling you earlier about that we're going to be setting up a, a retreat. It's actually going to be a grief ritual with uh, Toby Christensen, who was a follower of Maladon Somme. So if any of you want to look those people up, you can look it up. Uh, Maladon Somme is um, an African shaman who um, basically ended up doing a lot with the Western world because of his upbringing. Um, don't want to spoil his story for you though, because his book is a very interesting read. But um, anyhow, so Toby Christensen, he was um, uh, Maladoma's uh, best friend for a long time and actually was inducted into his tribe and um, you know, they did a whole ritual around it and everything with his, with his tribe and brought him into his family. So he's actually his considered brother. And he's doing an African grief ritual here in um, April. We're gonna actually hold it on April 5th. And the place, going back to manifestation, um, the place we're gonna hold it at, I've been looking at, you know, looking for a place now since, oh, spring. We've been trying to look for um, a, a place that would be great for holding this African grief ritual. Well, the thing is, is that you need to be kind of specific. And we at first we found a place that was outdoors, and it was a very primitive type situation. And we were like, "Oh, that'd be perfect." And he goes, "Nope, the people are going to be tired, and exhausted, and going through this ritual with all of them. And if you go through this entire ritual, they're going to be so exhausted that you know that you need them to be comfortable afterwards. And there has to be a place for food. So." So this is a good example you're for a large. You need to have all the parties involved that are manifesting this thing so they're all on the same page. And right. You might manifest the wrong thing for somebody else. Exactly. So over and over and over again, I kept being thwarted on trying to find, you know, a place because, you know, as I'm learning more and more things about what's needed, I'm finding I don't have anything like that. So we're going out there and we're we're trying, we're trying our tail off to try and find these people, and all of a sudden it pops up. And this lady, she has a perfect place. It sleeps uh, easily 14 people. And that's with uh, everybody in the bed. Easily sleeps 14 people. And uh, little, she does like little retreats there and everything else. And um, this weekend uh, coming up, she's actually going to be doing a um, uh, manifestation uh, workshop where they actually all talk about manifestation. They all work on it together to try to help manifest each other's dreams. Mm -hmm. So they're having a whole manifestation workshop there. But anyhow, it manifested our dreams at the same time because, you know, we've been looking for this for a long time. Um, you know, I've been, I've been wanting to learn this African grief ritual and to learn it straight from the horse's mouth. It's going to be amazing. So I'm really happy that that's going to be going on. That it was totally that way. I mean, it was out of left field. It was totally out of left field that it ended up happening. But it, it was exactly what we were looking for. It kind of was, but it kind of wasn't. Yeah. The universe was ready to deliver. Yep. You were in. It was, was ready. You had <laughs> split energy. The universe didn't know what to give you. You kept on talking back and forth. The universe was saying this, and you're going to know this. And it 
wasn't in alignment. Yeah, the, well, that's the, the mindset part. The, the universe is time. That's that's another thing, right? I mean, you might want something, but it always comes on the universe's time. It's not necessarily on your time. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, but I think the universe will, I, I believe, deliver immediately if you will have it all your ducks in order. Yeah. Like you'd say, this, this shaman guy didn't want to do it outside. You did want to do it outside. There's a conflict of interest there. Right. The universe is not ready to deliver it. I can't do that because there's no such thing as an inside outside. Uh, right. Right. But so yeah, that, so it was it was basically like June, then July went past, and I'm like, okay, and then we thought we were gonna do something in August, and then it didn't work out then. And then finally, like literally every single person involved was just like, it's all right, the energy's just on you right now. And we're like, oh, all right, okay, I really hate to put a you know, tack in it, but here we go. And I'm like, all right, we'll just we're just gonna push the pan in and we're we're gonna go ahead and let let that go for a little while. And then I was like basically at a standstill for the last two months, and I know it's having a new baby and all of that, but you know, at the same time, there's so much that we've been trying to do, right? There's just a lot that you need to get done. And you know, I'm like, okay, here's a whole list of things. Literally everything went on hold, and then and then January rolls around, and I'm like, oh, I don't know why this isn't working. First week of January is done now. We're heading into the next week. Literally, it rolls over to Saturday, so it was this uh, Saturday, and all of a sudden, five things I've been waiting on. So this. what was it? <laughs> what was it that shifted in your mindset, and not just your mindset, but I mindset? What was it that shifted in that? I, I, I honestly can't tell you. That's 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 a very interesting well, part of it. Aspect. Sounds like it was that African dude, that, uh, the shaman, that clarified that this needs to be indoors. Well, that was back in July. Oh, that was yeah, that was a while. Yeah, it's pretty curious still on what it is in the lines. I have a I have a sneaking suspicion that you know that the universe knew better than me about um what my needs might be right after my baby was born sure and i have a sneaking suspicion that that's the case because so there's where the universe is going to go are you in your freaking mind this isn't the time to do this chill right. out a little bit yeah <laughs> yeah exactly so it's kind of one of those things where it where it didn't really fall into place when i thought it would and there's other things that fell into place too last year that like I wanted to do for a long time. So like working professionally with plant medicine. So everybody can say all day long, oh, I've, I've done a bunch of drugs. I know what I'm doing, right? Or I have had experiences where I've learned about this kind of stuff and you know I know what I'm doing, but it's a whole other thing to take a class. And you're taking a class with literally the people who wrote the book on it and you find that you're not only able to keep up with them but you can actually teach them a thing or two and then you're going ah okay maybe this really is the path i should go down <laughs> and that that happened this last year my, my wife finally prodded me to go take a course and it was like that kind of eye-opening and that's what prodded me to start looking into learning these african grief rituals of course leading to all of this but it again it wasn't literally it wasn't until saturday that everything opened back up again it's it's like mm. literally it's like every single door was shut and locked until then and then all of a sudden all of a sudden they just all open all at the same time and and what? here it is monday right so it's like literally like here we are now we're just going to give it to you all at once and here we are Monday, and now I got a call for for an interview I've been trying to put, you know, trying to get a hold of since November, early, nope, I got a call on the way home from the hospital after having the baby, I got, I got the call about um, that they were interested, but with a whole bunch of things that happened, it's been on hold since then. So, <laughs> so I wonder if that situation, not to put any bad karma into it, 
But what if this situation is to tell you, no, this isn't going to work because you've got this other thought? I don't know. And I'll say, it's possible. Or is whatever this other this uh, project that this guy's going to call about the interview, what if it's in alignment with what you're supposed to be creating somehow? That would be interesting, and, okay. I, and, and I have no idea how That's just got to be open. Yeah, because all of a sudden those guys might go, oh my god, I'm really excited about doing this interview because I had this dream last night. Right? <laughs> those are the weird things. So I want to shift here yes. a little bit into another project that I'm um, talking with your wife at the first Thursdays thing. Because I had this project of a coffee shop. Yeah, I know that you, you wanted to have a coffee shop. It was the first business plan I ever put together. I put together this business plan. I was 21 when we were put it together. Really? Yeah. Well, I was looking into some of this stuff because I had this, this idea for, the big vision for it is a private club coffee shop. Yeah. It's not really your uh, typical place. And it ends up being in a warehouse area. And when I started pulling this stuff together, all of a sudden I found the warehouse. It's in Fridley. It's close. Nice. That's what I was looking at. And all that stuff starts coming together really, really fast. So when Elizabeth said, you had an interest in that, I started looking and researching it some more. And it turns out that there's a lot to be known about creating coffee, mm -hmm. let alone the business plan and all that stuff. Right. And you need to know how to repair these coffee grinders and the yeah. espresso machines. And that's not part of my plan. There's really a lot that goes into it. Yeah, there it's is. kind of interesting. And then the, I was listening to these guys about, you know, to do this, you got to make sure you got to do this and that. And, you know, if you got a lot of money, you can hire a general manager and they kind of just take care of it all. Mm -hmm. And they said, but you've got to be able to find the right person. But if you use this mindset manifestation stuff we're talking about, and you get real clear on, I want a general manager that's got an interest in uh, magical entertainment and spirituality, and knows a little bit about something about coffee and is looking for an opportunity that isn't necessarily a, a salary but a earned income kind of mm -hmm. concept. Mm -hmm. and if you go clear on what their, that person is, that person is going to pop into the space somehow. So when I was sharing this with Elizabeth about that, and she said, You've got an interesting coffee shop. Maybe there was a connection there somehow. Right. Yeah, we'll definitely have to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> Because my idea was, I, I didn't want to just all of a sudden, okay, I'm going to go take out a loan and I'm going to find a bunch of equipment. It's going to be a $50,000, $100,000 project. I got it's expensive. It's sell freaking coffee. I have a different plan for all that. So I yeah. scaled it all back and just started with the cart. Now you got a cart for a couple thousand bucks, maybe five or ten thousand. They ain't going to cost you much. Depends on what you do. Yeah, what kind of machines you got in there. It costs you that much. It would cost you about ten if you were if you were doing a coffee truck. Well, that was the next level, yeah. next phase. First part was the cart, and just the basic essence of what I'll speak this out to the universe too is the idea is is it's a coffee experience. It's not just going and getting a coffee because you like the coffee. It's a it's a magical experience. So if you want, you can sit down in a chair and there are magicians that are there that do magic while you're enjoying. So the whole thing is a magical theme. Oh, so it's nice. It's like a coffee cart that's a theme park kind of thing. Interesting. And you can set up at farmers markets and fairs and festivals and also private catering for special events. So those are different revenue streams for this mm -hmm. co-op because this concept is owned by the people. Okay. It's not a bank loan. Yeah. It's created by the people that are members. And there's an affiliate program tied in it, so you have a financial incentive to share the membership with other people. And now these people can also actually work. Does the person want to be the general manager at the distant coffee shop? Or they want to be the truck driver or the mechanic for the truck or a barista for the cart? Mm -hmm. Or they were artistic and they wanted to create the cart, mm -hmm. create it and make it look magical instead of a tin, you know, stainless steel thing. Let's do something cool with it. Mm -hmm. So I just do that stuff. Yeah, well, that's interesting. <laughs> I mean, I think I think that there's a lot of like serious opportunities that are out there for for people in their dreams and manifesting. There are these things are happening weird, 
and this is a whole other topic we can talk about in the next show, but the whole thing about the, uh, this new banking system and stuff, the whole digital currency and, and uh, is it good, is it bad? Oh yeah, I have, I have stories about that one because yeah. I, I worked on a project. Uh, this is my, one of my 2020 projects. Um, my, my wife and I, uh, she runs the photography studio here. <laughs> and 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 uh, to her and I together we do we do branding. Mm -hmm. So with the branding side of it, we have a client. I won't say who the client is or anything, but an intrinsic portion of that had to do with the quantum financial system. And the quantum financial system at that point, like nobody knew about it. And I'm talking to these people. Yeah, quantum financial system. I'm like, oh, yeah, I, th I actually do know a little bit about that. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, whenever I was working in my network engineering, um, I was actually laying some of the initial, no, I didn't lay down the fight, but I, I was supporting the equipment that was going towards a lot of this initial, um, initial rollout that was moving into this new financial system. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first things that they connected was the stock markets and the banks, right? Because it could be perfectly time standing for everything else. Well, one of the phenomena that they were finding when they started using the qubit is that whenever they would send the information to the other side, was that you would actually, it would arrive sometimes before you actually get sent. And so it was kind of fascinating. It was because of the quantum entanglement. Because they use quantum entanglement to be able to do it, so we're going to hit the button. Sometimes we arrive here, like literally reach back. We, we have another five minutes, but that was yeah. some other stuff that popped in too. There's a yeah, we'll roll, we'll roll into that. But I have fascinating stories about all of that, all the stuff that I found. It ties into aliens and everything. It's so fascinating. It really is. It is. It's a bizarre, weird thing. It is, it is. It's really bizarre. There's so much conspiracy theory behind it. But then on top of that, not only is there this like conspiracy theory behind it, but also like even the people who are implementing the technology, a lot of them swear up and down. It's not, it's not earthly technology, that it's actually a technology that was given to us. And <laughs> nobody knows how it works. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about the very experts in the industry are like, yeah, we don't really understand how it works. Well, people it's have been programmed <laughs> to think about this conspiracy theory and the tinfoil hat person that's crazy. But mm -hmm. a conspiracy is something that is conspired. It's right. planned out. Right. We're conspiring right now. People plan <laughs> things out. <laughs> yeah. And now it's a theory like theology. Mm -hmm. It's not proven, but it seems kind of probable. Mm -hmm. So conspiracy theories are not crazy. Right. And they're, they're totally not crazy. It's become very obvious with some of the things that have happened in the last two or three years. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, we can maybe sign this off. You guys got to tune in more often because I think we got some other cool stuff that's happening. Okay. You should check to see if we have any comments. I'm not sure we do today. I'll take a peek. We had know. comments last time and we missed the opportunity to be able to answer them because we didn't know until afterwards because we're so used to having one or two people watching us. No live. comments and no viewers. This was broadcasted on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. <laughs> you, YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be good. Be kind. Be nice. Be safe. Did I say be safe? Be safe. See ya.